Hello, and welcome to this Microbiology Bio 203 video lecture on Chapter 5 of your OpenStax book, The Eukaryotes of Microbiology. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I'll be your guide as we explore this topic together. We begin today with the protists. Protists include unicellular eukaryotic parasites, as well as a variety of other organisms that are not parasitic whatsoever. Protists have no formal taxonomic relationship to one another, as they do not have a shared evolutionary origin. The kingdom Protista, by and large, is a catch-all kingdom of organisms we are really not sure what else to do with. In the kingdom Protista, or Amongst the protists, we have animal-like protists, plant-like protists, and fungus-like protists. The animal-like protists are the protozoa. The plant-like protists are the alga, and the fungus-like protists are the molds. This table illustrates some of the general characteristics of the animal-like protists known as the protozoa. Protozoa can be both aquatic and terrestrial, they may also be free-living or parasitic. They tend to be chemoheterotrophic, unicellular, and will either ingest or absorb their food. Many have interesting additions to their life cycle, such as a trophozoite feeding and growing stage and or the production of cysts. Many reproduce asexually, but can also reproduce sexually. There are a variety of eukaryotic supergroups. Classification in these supergroups is based on evolutionary history as illustrated in the cladogram to the right. Protists place across different taxonomic groups. There are six supergroups of eukaryotes. Here we'll compare the different types of protozoa, the ciliates, the flagellates, and the amoeba. Paramecium is ciliated. It has a cytosome to ingest food and a cytoproct to excrete. The amoeba has pseudopods or false feet that it uses for locomotion and distinct layers of the cytoplasm. The euglena is a flagellate. It uses a flagellum to swim or propel itself. Many have contractile vacuoles, which help them maintain osmotic balance with their external environment. Here we see a little more detail of the amoebozoa. The amoebozoa, as mentioned previously, use pseudopods to move. Enthamoeba histolytica causes amoebic dysentery. Slime molds have unicellular and multicellular life cycles. AP complexa are non-modal, obligate, intracellular parasites who have complex life cycles and include plasmodium, or better known as plasmodium vivax, the organism that causes malaria. The ciliates include the paramecium, and the division excavata includes giardia and Trypanosoma, which causes African sleeping sickness. Next, we have the helminths. Helminths are organisms that fall in the kingdom Animalia. They are, by and large, parasitic worms. They are chemoheterotrophic, typically all multicellular, and have cells arranged in tissues and organs. They acquire food either by ingestion or absorption have elaborate life cycles, and form embryos through reproduction. This is an illustration of the nematodes and platyalmenthes. The nematodes are roundworms and come in approximately 15,000 different varieties. They have unsegmented bodies and a full digestive system, but lack most other organ systems. They are common intestinal parasites. Platyalmenthes are the flatworms, and fall into two groups, the trematodes and the cestodes. 
both have flattened bodies. The trematode has a leaf-shaped body with suckers that hold the organism in place and suck fluids from the host. The cestodes have a segmented body with a more ribbon shape to their body as opposed to the leaf shape of the trematodes. The head or scolex may also have suckers and hooks for attachment. These lack a digestive system but have a complex reproductive system. They absorb nutrients directly from their host. The fungi belong to kingdom fungi. They are chemoheterotrophic and multicellular all except for yeast. Their cellular arrangement might be unicellular, filamentous, or fleshy, and they form hyphae. They absorb their food. They can reproduce sexually and asexually using spores. None of them form embryos. Some common types of fungi are listed here. The molds and fleshy fungi all use hyphae or filaments to form the thallus or body. The hyphae can contain septa or sometimes not. The hyphae can be vegetative or reproductive and they can form a mycelium which is visible. Yeast are unicellular. They often divide by budding or fission. They can do aerobic or anaerobic growth which is known as fermentation. Dimorphic fungi can grow as a mold or as a yeast, depending on the temperature. This is a list of some medically important fungi. The zygomycotins, ascomycotins, anamorphs, and basidiomycotins are all groups of medically important fungi. Zygomycotins include things like black bread mold. Ascomycotins are the sac fungi. Anamorphs include candida and Basidiomycota includes Cryptococcus. Next we have the alga. The alga are photosynthetic eukaryotes. They can be unicellular or multicellular and are important in the production of organic matter and oxygen. Microscopic alga, diatoms, and dinoflagellates all fall under the category of alga, while macroscopic include things like kelp or more commonly referred to as seaweed. A few alga have medical interest. The diatoms produce domic acid, which is toxic. When ingested within the food chain, it can bioaccumulate and biomagnify and disrupt the food chain, killing organisms as high as humans. Dinoflagellates produce neurotoxin, causing paralytic shellfish poisoning. Paralytic shellfish poisoning can also bioaccumulate and biomagnify through the food chain and can affect humans. Auger in laboratory is produced by seaweed. Lichen. Lichen is a combination of green alga or cyanobacteria and a fungus. It is an example of a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae. It tends to be slow growing, can live for centuries, and is an important part of any ecosystem as a pioneer species. This concludes our coverage of the eukaryotes of microbiology.